In this video, I'm going to share some of my ideas on more efficient bow drilling. Things that I think will help make bow drilling a little bit easier for you and help embers come a little bit faster. A lot of what I'm going to share is covered in great detail in my article on the physics of fire by friction. I'll put a link to that down in the description if you'd like to do a deep dive. Stay tuned. The first thing I'd like to discuss with you is the use of aluminum foil as a coal catcher underneath your fireboards. Just don't do it. Overall, it's a counterproductive practice. Turns out that uh, aluminum has one of the highest thermal conductivities of all the commonly available, relatively inexpensive metals. From a fire making point of view, what that means is as a little ember is starting to form on top of an aluminum foil coal catcher, the aluminum is going to suck away the heat from that forming ember and radiate it away into the atmosphere. As a bow driller, you're gonna to have to work that much harder to overcome the heat loss if you choose to use aluminum foil. From another point of view, if you are an experienced firecrafter who's helping tend an ember, for a firecrafter candidate who's off running into the woods looking for uh, uh, kindling and fuel for their fire, you're gonna have to work harder to feed that ember and keep it alive if you're working on top of aluminum foil. Once again, that aluminum foil is gonna suck away the heat and radiate it away. So what would you use instead, for example? I like to use bark on occasion. Uh, if you happen to find a pine tree uh, growing near where you're working, you might pull a little scale off of the pine tree. Uh, pine tree bark is a little bit scaly and you can pop off a little, uh, little scale without damaging the tree and use that as your coal catcher. Works really well. If you happen to find a, a birch tree, in particular river birch trees, which have real paper-like bark, that works great as a coal catcher. You can even use leaves. You can use a dead leaf if you want, as long as you transfer that ember into your tinder bundle relatively quickly so it doesn't catch fire. You could also use a green leaf. A green leaf does have moisture in it, and it will pull some of the heat away from the forming ember, but not nearly as quickly as aluminum foil will do. What I like to use, though, it's my go-to coal catcher, is a piece of scrap leather. This is just a piece of leather. It's about four inches by two inches. Um, it is somewhat of a consumable item. If you leave your ember sitting on top of a piece of leather too long, it will tend to burn it. But hey, scrap leather is cheap. I bought a five pound package of uh, scrap uh, leather remnants at Hobby Lobby several years ago for some other long ago project. And uh, it, that'll, that'll last me a lifetime. You might chip in with some of your friends and, and buy a small package and cut it up in little pieces and, and use that as your coal catcher. If you've got an old pair of high top boots that don't fit any longer, cut them up. Be creative. Um, just don't use aluminum foil and really give thought to using leather as your ember coal catcher. I think you'll uh, uh, find that it's a much faster and more efficient practice to use. Before sharing some of my additional thoughts on efficient bow drilling, I'm going to show you an equation that's one of the key results from my article on the physics of fire by friction. I encourage you to pause the video and study this equation, its variables, and how the variables interact. Study that for a few minutes so that you'll better understand what I share with you a little bit later on. The next suggestion I have for fast and efficient bow drilling is to use skinny spindles. This is the first spindle that I ever made. It's made out of red elm, sometimes known as slippery elm. It's a little more than an inch in diameter. Uh, when it started, it was maybe 12 inches long. It's about 10 inches long now. You can see that it's well charred and well worn. Had a lot of success with it, but it's a bear to use. 
This is a more typical spindle for me now. This is also made out of red elm. Uh, when it first started, it was maybe, I don't know, about six inches long or so. It's maybe just a little over five inches long now, and it's right around a half inch in diameter. This spindle will allow me to make embers much more quickly than with this big old bear. It turns out that the minimum time, minimum expected time for ember formation, all things being equal, is directly proportional to the cross-sectional area of the spindle. Pi r naught squared in the previous equation where r naught is the radius of the spindle. That means that as the cross-sectional area of the spindle goes down, the minimum expected time for em ember formation also goes down. This is because the heat that's generated through friction is concentrated over a smaller and smaller area. The heat per unit area goes up because it's concentrated into a smaller area. This causes embers to ignite and form that much more quickly. A spindle this size, all things being equal, should take about four times as long to make an ember as this little, this little spindle. This is about an inch diameter spindle. This is about a half inch diameter spindle. Cutting the diameter in half or cutting the radius in half reduces the cross-sectional area by a factor of four. That's what makes this little guy so quick and easy to use when I'm using it as a bow drill spindle. So I know it's still common practice to suggest to new uh, uh, fire makers to make big fat spindles, but I'm encouraging you to do something different. I really encourage you to go small and go fast. I've separately made a video on the benefits and joys of using ever shorter fire bows. I'll put a link to that down in the description. Until I convince enough people to start using short bows though, it's pretty likely that uh, young people when they're first learning how to uh, bow drill are gonna show up with bows that are as long as their arm or longer. So be it. How many times have you been in the presence of a novice fire maker and they start making smoke? They start making smoke for the first time and a whole bunch of well-meaning firecrafter friends of theirs show up to watch and they start coaching them along. Somebody in that group, used to be me, till I learned better, somebody in that group is going to say, don't short stroke the bow. Scout, young person is going to have a bow that's way too long to start with and somebody's going to say, don't short stroke the bow. That's bad advice. Short stroke the bow all you want. You just got a bow quickly. In the equation that I showed you just a few minutes ago, the minimum expected time for ember formation, all things being equal, is inversely related to average bow speed. Meaning, if you bow more quickly, you're likely to form an ember more quickly. There is nothing in that relationship at all about bow stroke, bow length, overall spindle rotation. There's nothing in there at all about it. it. All has to do with speed. Speed wins. Those of you who know me know that I say all the time, speed wins. Speed is the, the most important thing when it comes to bow drilling. Bow as quickly as you can. If you've got a young person who showed up to camp with a bow that's as long as their arm, and they are starting to make smoke, if, they're, if their form is good enough that they're starting to make smoke, Realistically, they're about a minute away from making an ember. But if they start long stroking the bow, very likely what will happen is their bow speed will drop. The heat will fall off and they will fail to form an ember. They'll just end up exhausted and frustrated. If they are capable of bowing quickly using only a small portion of that bow, short stroking it, that's fine. Let them do it. Encourage them to bow as quickly as they can at a speed that they can sustain for about, say, a minute. All right? Encourage them to bow quickly. Don't encourage them to use the full length of the bow. If they need to short stroke and go fast, let them do it. 
This is my favorite bow currently. It's only 16 inches long, and I have demonstrated over multiple videos that short bows, short stroking a long bow, is sufficient. I can make fast, easy embers using a short bow as long as I bow quickly. Speed wins. Bow stroke is irrelevant. Let your scouts short stroke the bows if they want. Just encourage them to go fast. So once again, consider the scenario where you've got a, a young person or a, a novice fire maker and they're starting to make smoke with their bow drill kit for the very first time. All their friends, all their firecrafter buddies gather around and start coaching them and offering them their best advice. Somebody is going to say, don't short stroke the bow, like I mentioned previously. Let them short stroke the bow. Just encourage them to bow quickly. Somebody else is real likely to say, more pressure, candidate, more pressure. Meaning that they're suggesting that the fire maker lean more forcefully on their spindle. Well, if you look at the equation I showed you a little while back, the minimum expected time for ember formation, all things being equal, is indeed inversely related to the downward force applied to that spindle. Meaning that if you lean harder, it looks like you ought to form embers faster. And that's true, but only up to a point. It's possible to lean too hard. If you lean too hard, it's possible for the frictional force at the spindle and fireboard interface to increase to the point where it acts like a brake. It can slow down or even stop the bow speed. All right, and that's especially important when you're considering a, a young person who doesn't maybe have a whole lot of upper body strength. You don't want to encourage them to lean on the spindle so hard that it causes the bow speed to slow down. You just simply cannot bow too fast, but you can lean a little too hard. There's a good compromise there. What you probably want to do instead of just saying more pressure candidate is you want to encourage them to lean just a little bit more in small increments while all the time making sure that it doesn't affect bow speed. So once again, you can't bow too fast. You just can't. More speed always wins but you can lean too hard. Don't overdo it. All right, folks, that's all for this one. I uh, hope you found this valuable. I'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching.